We launched Belong this week, which is really about calling us into uh, just a, a, a new chance to look at what does it mean for us to belong together as God's people? What does it mean to be part of this family that is Gateway? And what does it mean to be part of God's wider church? Um, we are aware that, you know, there's been lots of change amongst us at Gateway over the last year or two. There are people from who have been here for 30 years. There are people who have been here for a month or two. There are people from all sorts of different um, backgrounds, uh, both within the UK, from other nations, um, different experiences of church. And we're aware that, uh, that actually we come with all sorts of different views on what the church is about. Some expect some... Uh, some high expectations, some with not much expectation at all of what does it mean to be part of the family of God's people. And we just feel that there's something that God is doing at the moment, um, which is refreshing for us, if you like. What is the blueprint for the church? What is it that God has made us part of? What is it that uh, we are to call one another into and to work out amongst ourselves what does it mean to belong together in this, in this family? Um, we believe that it's an exciting journey. We're trying to work out how to do it. So uh, Belong this week, that was our first group of 40 people uh, that were gathering together, just round tables. So we get to talk about uh, what's going on in one another's lives. We get to hear different dreams and what God is doing and speaking uh, to one another about. And it's an exciting start. We'll adapt it as we go. But we, our, our heart is that all of us go through this process um, of being drawn in to belong so that there's a deeper understanding and a refreshing, if you like, of this call to be part and, and to fully work out what it means to be part of local church. So I hope you think it's exciting. We think it's exciting. I hope that you'll be drawn into it. You can book for the next set. Of, so this belong uh, that we're doing at the moment is full. Uh, you can book in for the next one. There's one uh, towards the end of November, beginning of December. And then uh, there's already dates for one on a Sunday afternoon after church um, in the new year as well. And so go online and book into those because we really want to call one another. And actually, we believe that it's something that God is doing, that it's been a funny few years that we've been through. And actually, often what you, what you find, I guess you find this throughout history, is that when God shakes things up, and when, as a church, we're shaken up, it's often because God wants to do something. And actually, we believe that he's wanting to refresh what it is to be part of church, refresh our understanding of what it means to be called into the church, to, be, uh, to, be, to belong to one another. And that actually, that, that plumb line that is set in Scripture for what it means to be church and what we are as church actually is, uh, is being kind of refreshed. We're, we're being called back to it. Some places maybe where we've drifted off a bit, and God, in a season of shaking, says, no, I want you to remember what it is to be part of church. So that's the place that we're at. And so we want to spend a few more weeks actually just pressing into some different aspects of what the Bible says about what it means to be the family of God. Today, interestingly enough, I want to talk about foundations. Now, if you've been in the room so far, anyone who's been in the room so far this, this, this morning, will know that foundations have been mentioned, which is a great relief to a preacher always, especially when there's not much time left. So, I am going to read the scripture from Ephesians 2, um, that, where Paul talks about the church, what it means to be part of the church, and actually what it, what it means uh, to lay good foundations. So here we go. This is Ephesians 2. As you will have heard me say a few weeks ago, the church... Uh, uh, Ephesians is a book with lots to say about the church. It's really exciting. Um, get into Ephesians because God talks all about what it means to be part of this amazing, earth-shattering family of people that is the church. Okay, so this is Ephesians 2, just three verses, starting at verse 19. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Have you heard that already this morning? Christ Jesus, the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by his spirit. 
If you thought you were just coming along to a meeting on a Sunday morning, uh, if you just thought this was what you do on a Sunday, then please, can, could we leave that up there, Z? Is that all right? Um, then think again, right? Because you are no longer far off. You were far off from God, but God, by his sacrifice on the cross, has forgiven you and brought you near. Amen? We just celebrated that. And now, you know, it's not just you and God. Often we, we live in such an individualistic culture, a lot of us, don't we? Or oh, that's what we've grown up with. And we think it's, it's me and Jesus. It's about me getting on with Jesus, being forgiven, trying to live my life in a Jesus-type way from now on. But actually, it's so much more than that. You're fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Amen? You've been joined into a family. You're no longer who you were before. You're not just an individual. You're part of this new family, a new family that is made up for, of people from all the nations, of people from all backgrounds and experiences. Amen? You're part of a family. You're part of the household. And you're built on the found, this cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone. And because each of us are related to Jesus, so now we are also related to one another. Amen? So whether you like it or not, and sometimes it's easier and sometimes it's more difficult. And sometimes when we see the full extent of what God is building the church to be, it seems incredibly difficult to be part of it, maybe. It's a challenge, but God by his spirit is building us together. And because we're related to him, we're related to one another in a family. Amen. And as we learn what it means to be built together as a family, so... We become a holy temple, the Bible says. Amen? What is a temple? A temple is a place where God meets with men, yeah? And men and women. A, a place where God meets with human beings. Where is the temple now? In us. Amen? It's not here. It's not church. It's wherever you are, yeah? Yeah? It's wherever we are, in our, in our streets, in our workplaces. The temp, that's when God now meets with people. Amen? Because we're filled with him. We're his image bearers and we're filled with his spirit. But there is something about, there's also something about being together, where God promises that as we're together in ones, twos, family, not ones, maybe, that's not really together, but in families, twos, threes, as we gather there's something that God does and he dwells amongst us by his spirit. Amen? What an incredible thing that the living God, the creator of the universe, the God of all history, the beginning, the one who is from everlasting to everlasting, he promises to dwell amongst us. I'm going to lose my ear. Um, he promises to dwell amongst us as we learn what it is to be together as his people. Amen? The very presence of God. So this is worth... This is worth working at, yeah? It's worth working out what it means to be joined together. And the beautiful thing about this, so, okay, there's been a few prophetic things, actually. There's that, what Helen brought about us building one brick, and actually God is, one brick on another, and actually God is saying, what, just put the next brick on today. And Al, in the prayer meeting this morning, brought a picture about an orchestra where all the different instruments together, there's, there's, there's something about all the different instruments playing, all the different gifts in the room, all the different experiences coming together and creating something that is beautiful. And that is what God does in his church. And I, I think we've seen some of that this morning, haven't we? Becca, what, I'm sorry to single you out, but what an amazing gift. Do you know that Becca, sorry about this again, but she wrote that there and then as we were singing, as God was speaking. What a, what a gift. That's, but the thing is, Becca has that gift. But do you know what? Spread right across this room, wherever you're from, whatever you think you bring, you have gifts. You have experiences. You have unique things which God wants to blend together, bring together, draw out of one another. And in so doing, creates this beautiful piece of music that the orchestra creates. That's the picture. Amen? And often, you know, it's easy... Uh, it's easy to single out gifts of leadership. It's easy to single out gifts uh, who do things that are more upfront or are, 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 are more big in the town. Or, you know, we often talk about where we talk about night shelter. We, we, we talk about, but actually, I want to say 
Those are easy things, but actually we need to do the hard work of drawing out what is going on in one another. And that's partly, by the way, why we're doing belong in the way that we are, round tables. Because actually what I found on Wednesday night, I had a table of people, some I knew, some I didn't know so well. And actually what we started to hear was people's stories and what God is doing in them and the gifts that they have and the things that they're passionate about. And that is what church is about. Actually, that as we come together, we discover that in one another. And actually, we're given the job of drawing out from one another what God has put in and discovering it, okay, and encouraging it and asking questions to find and, and going across the room and going to people that are maybe not like us, but, but being bold in that and courageous and going, what's God doing with you? And can I pray for it? And I, 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 what I see in you is this. And, and all of that work of togetherness, of being together, of being built. And that's what, the, that's what Paul says, isn't it? Being joined together, growing into a holy temple, a place where God meets with people. And actually, as we get this better and better, we believe that it will, go, it will overflow from us more and more as well into those around us. Amen? Because as we learn what it is to be church, as we learn what it is to draw out of one another the gifts that God has put in, and to encourage them, and to bless them, and to release one another into the things that God's got for us, actually, there'll be, uh, increasingly, there will be an overflow. Increasingly, God will be seen amongst us. And increasingly, we will be the temple where God gets to meet with people. Amen? And it will, it will happen more and more. We believe that. And that's why we believe that God is stirring us right now. There's actually something that he's doing because of all that we've been through in the last few years. Prophetically, we have that sense that actually, as God is shaking, He's, he's, he's fine-tuning us as the church. He's, he's teaching us what it means to be together. It's, he's teaching us what it means to draw out of one another the gifts and the longings and the passions and to, and to enable one another to be this amazing orchestra, this amazing body with different parts that bring different things. That is what he's doing right now. And, we, and in, our, in, our, in our stumbling ways, we're seeking to build that and to draw it out of people and to say... Do you feel like you belong here? Because if you do, we want to we, we wanna help you to be released into the things that God's doing with you. And always, this is a twofold process. Always, it's about the individual. It's about the gifts. It's about you becoming who God always intended you to be as a person. But it's also about God together doing something with a temple where his spirit dwells. Amen? And in G it's no accident that in, in John 17... As Jesus is praying to the Father, his last prayer, he talks about God, will you, he's praying for us, his future followers. Okay, he's praying to the Father and he says, will you make them one? Will you, will you unite them so that the world will see who I am? So that the world will know. There's something about us learning what it is to be together. And this goes way beyond Gateway, by the way, because there's a whole, there's a whole world full of his people. Um, that we're to be together. But here we get to work out with all of our differences and all of our different experiences what it is to be this family together. And as we do that, as we're united, as we become, to, as we're built together, like Paul says, with Jesus as the cornerstone, so the world will see. Amen? So actually God is in the business of building his church, of causing us to be all that he intended us to be. And we believe he's doing that in, in these days. We want to cooperate with that and we want to help as best we can one another. And this is not just about leaders, by the way. This is about all of us as part of the family, getting alongside one another, getting to know one another, finding out what God is doing, finding out what gifts and desires and passions and dreams and prophetic things are, are, are living within each of us. And right now you might think, oh, well, there's nothing. I don't, I, I don't have... But you, there are things that God has put in. There's gifts. There's uniquenesses that only you, uh, there's things that only you can do in the purposes of God, which together cause the orchestra to sing, cause the orchestra to, to create the amazing music. There was a, there was a pre I've just seen June's face over there, and it's reminded me of a prophetic word from the very start of this church 30 years ago. June, you'll remember this. Somebody brought it about God is putting on a massive production. Don't write yourself out of the script. Do you remember that, June? It, it, it lived with us in the early days when Swindon Family Church, as it was then, what became Gateway Church, when it was only small, God is putting on a huge production. Don't write yourself out of the script. 
And these are days where God is drawing us and calling us. I was going to talk about the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I'm not going to do that. That would be foolish. What I would love us to do, actually, I think is, to, is actually to pray for one another. Because I believe in these days God wants to activate us by his spirit. We'll get to the foundation of, I was going to explain to you what the foundation of the apostles and prophets were, but that, that will need to be another day. Because right now, I think God wants to build some foundations in us and in us together. And I know we're talking about this a lot at the moment, but that's because we believe that this is what God is doing in this season. And there are many people that God wants to join in now. There are many people that God wants to release into the dreams and the things that he's put in their heart. You know, I was thinking of examples of this this morning and things that some things get mentioned, some things don't. And I, I really want to say if, if your thing doesn't get mentioned, that doesn't mean God's not working. And we need to get better at telling one another the stories of what God is doing amongst us, actually. One of the joys of being around the table at Belong on Wednesday evening was just hearing those who have a passion for, for actually being in their workplace where God has put them nine to five during the week because actually that's one of those areas that we don't often talk about. It doesn't get profile, but actually many, many of us are called and that's the primary place where we get to work out what it is to be image bearers of God and we need to work out what that looks like and we need to encourage one another and actually we need to call one another on in that, in that ministry. It's a place of ministry, a place where we serve and we, may, and, and we, we, we bear God's image to the world. So what I want you to hear is this is not about Sunday church. This is not about doing the things that we do as church. This is about each of us being released to be the people that God has made us to be. But actually, we, what we find is that we, eat, we have a role in, with one another in that. And it's only as we're joined together that we enable one another in this. Amen. So I want to pray for us this morning. I, do, I, want, I want to pick up on, on Helen's prophetic words. I want to pray for some people who, who know it's time to put another brick on the foundations, who need, who need to put another brick. And it may be something that you just need to give to God. It may be something that God is calling you to do. It may be, it, it may be small. It may be big. It may be going across the road and knocking on a neighbor and seeing if they need something, uh, some, some kind of help or to be prayed for. It may be something that God's just been whispering to you. It may be actually something, an area where you feel like God is prompting you to serve or to, uh, to initiate something. It may be actually somebody across the room that God's just drawn your attention to that you need to go and encourage. It may be those small things, but they're not really small things. But actually, God is saying, no, I want you to put another brick. I want you to take another step. I'm building something. I want to pray for people who know that they need to be activated. It might be that you have a gift that you know that you have, that you, that you haven't used for some time. And actually God is saying, it's time to go again. There are some people who have a prophetic gift, who have that sense of what God is doing around here. And actually it needs activating again. You maybe haven't used it for a while or, or other gifts of the spirit, maybe words of knowledge or, or gifts of praying for people and seeing them healed. But actually, God wants to activate us. It may be that it's, it's time for you to take a step into us as a family. That actually, there's a decision point of saying, yeah, I think this is the place where God wants me. And I want to commit myself in. And, what, uh, and I need to make a step. What, what does that look like for you? I, I need to be activated in this moment. It may be that you've become disillusioned with church. Actually, because of experiences in the past uh, that you kind of fed up with the whole church thing. You maybe go through the motions, but, but actually it's not a, an exciting, living, dynamic family thing where you're looking to see what God is doing. You've kind of, you, that's kind of gone by the wayside a bit because of, uh, because of just how circumstances have gone. And, and God wants to, again, breathe into you a passion for his people and for his people being all that it's meant to be, and for you playing your part in that. Because we all need one another in this, amen? We're being built together. 
And so if any of those, so if any of those things are you this morning, I'd love us just to be bold and just to stand up right where you are just, just now. Because I think God is wanting to activate us. I think God is wanting to build again and he's calling us to go again. He's calling, he, he wants to put faith in us. If you know that you've lost faith for the church, I'm not talking about Sunday mornings, I'm talking about the God's people in the world, God's family and all that it's meant to be. If you know that this is a new season where you need to step in and let faith come again, I'd love you to stand up. I want you to be courageous this morning. It always takes, it always takes steps of boldness. It always takes steps of courage. But God wants to work. So can we just close our eyes? Let's lift our hands before him. Just as people have, just as people have got their eyes closed, please feel free just to stand before him. This is between you and him. Don't worry about what other people are doing in the room. But God is doing something new amongst his people. There's been a shaking and now God's saying, I want you to play your part. I want, you, I want to release in you the, all the things that I've put in you. Some of them may be historic. Some of them may be new things that he's speaking to you just now. But he wants to do something new. He is building something glorious in our day. The world is in a mess right now. We know that. And the answer is the church. That is God's plan. It's God's only plan that he would build a people that is ready to bear his image in greater measure, to cause one another and encourage one another and do the hard work of actually being a blessing to one another and therefore onwards to those around us and to the, the world in which we live. And I just believe what God wants to activate right now. So Father, I pray that you would come by your Holy Spirit Lord, to each person standing before you. Father, I pray, first of all, that you would release faith right now, Lord. Faith, come. Faith for your purposes, Lord. Faith for your church, Father, again. Rekindle it, Lord, I pray, right now, in people's hearts and minds. Lord, I pray that you would um, break people's hearts for your bride and for it becoming all that you intended it to be. Lord, we know we've got a long way to go. Boy, do we know that. But, Father, it's going to take every one of us laying down our difficulties, laying down our frustrations. And Father, I pray right now that you would come and you would activate. Lord, I pray by your spirit, you'd activate now right across this body, Father, that gifts that have been uh, laid dormant would be released right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, would you release gifts that this body might be all that you intended to be. Lord, we know that we, we know we've got work to do. We know, but we also know that you're at work and we know that the world needs it. We know that Swindon needs it, Lord. We know there's much to be done. And Father, we want to pray that we would be encouragers of one another in this. I want to pray, Lord, would you release, Lord, right across this room. Would you release now? Father, let your spirit fall. Father, I pray that you would speak to people across this room. I pray that you would drop uh, visions and uh, just imaginations of what you might do. Uh, Lord, that you would prompt us with things, ways in which to, we're to respond. Uh, Lord, instructions, give us instructions of things we're now to go and do or people that we're to speak to. Father, I pray, let the anointing of your spirit rest upon us as your people.